These are all the hero changes in Overwatch Season 7. Let's break this down and let's begin with the Sombra rework. So, Machine Pistol, damage increased from 7.5 to 8. Minimum spread reduced from 0 0.5 to 0. Number of shots until max spread has increased from 3 to 6 shots. Reload time reduced from 1.4 seconds. This means her primary fire is way more deadly. Hack. Cast time reduced from 0.75 seconds to 0.65 seconds. Now cancel stealth when hacking an enemy hero. Cooldown increased from 4 to 6 seconds. Hack has a reduced cooldown of 3 seconds if hack is interrupted or if a non-hero enemy is hacked. The hacked warning text will now only appear while you are silenced and not for the remainder duration of the hack debuff. Stealth gets completely reworked to be a passive, and this is the way it works. Ability reworked to passive. Sombra automatically becomes invisible after 3.5 seconds while not shooting, using a damaging ability or receiving damage. Stealth movement speed bonus reduced from 60 to 45%. Fade out duration into stealth reduced from 0.375 seconds to 0.25 seconds. Fade in duration from stealth reduced from 0.5 seconds to 0.375 seconds. Updated the UI messaging to the Sombra player when hacking health packs to revealed instead of detected. Now the message detected is only used when an enemy player is in the detection radius. Sombra now also has a ring around her, which can be turned off in the options if you don't like it. But I would recommend keeping this on because it shows you the detection radius of stealth around yourself. So you know how close you can get to heroes before they detect you. This is a massive stealth buff. <laughs> Virus is the new ability and this is how it works. This is a new ability and it is assigned to ability one by default. Fire a projectile that damages an enemy over time. Damage is dealt faster on hacked enemies. Impact damage, 10, 20 on hacked targets. Damage over time, 100 over 4 seconds, but 100 over 20 seconds on hacked targets. So what does this mean? This means if you go into stealth, which happens passively, you find a target, you hack them, that's the opener, then you fire virus at them and it hits them, virus will do an extra 10 bonus damage on impact, so it will do 20 on a hack target as opposed to 10 on a non-hack target. And then it will do 100 damage over two seconds. So what you get from the hack and virus combo is 120 damage over two seconds. And of course, while that's going on, you're shooting at them with your new and improved primary fire. You do a ton of damage if you land virus. Sombra is now an absolute assassin on the battlefield. I cannot understate how powerful she has become. Translocator also gets, I think, an incredible buff here. It makes it much more usable than the old Translocator. So here are the changes. Can no longer be manually activated. Translocator will now automatically teleport Sombra 0.25 seconds from being thrown or when impacting the environment. Reduces the stealth passive cooldown after teleporting. Projectile speed increased from 25 to 72. Cooldown reduced from 6 seconds to 5 seconds. Cooldown now begins after Sombra teleports to the location of the transporter. Projectile launch, initial vertical offset removed. Now, why is this really good? Because of the reduction in stealth passive cooldown after you teleport. You can throw this. It, basically, if you break your, your, your stealth, you, you perform an action that breaks it. So you go to you know attack somebody, do damage. Your stealth is broken. You then throw your translocator in an odd direction. Like throw it up into the air, just somewhere where people don't expect you to throw it. As soon as you teleport, you will pretty much instantly go back into stealth. That is incredibly powerful. Like stupidly powerful. It means you can just, you can disengage almost better than the disengage you had on the old translocator, which would teleport you anywhere across the map. It, this is so good. And of course, it's incredible for accessing high ground as well. This Sombra rework is honestly super powerful. EMP ultimate charge cost increased by 15%. Health percent damage decreased from 40 to 30%. So a little bit of a nerf there to EMP. Orissa sees a very minor nerf to Fortify. Damage reduction decreased from 50 to 45%. Developer comments, we are further readjusting Orissa's survivability, which was originally increased due to the armor damage stacking change we made several patches ago. This particular change is relatively light as we want her to be an effective pick against teams that lean on crowd control. Ramatra gets a buff to Nemesis form. Cooldown decreased from 8 to 7 seconds. 
Developers comments, this change lets Ramatra project his influence more frequently with Nemesis form, which translates into increased survivability and damage. The flexibility also makes it less punishing if he swaps back to Omnic form early to use the Void Barrier. Wrecking Ball Quad Cannons gets a buff. Number of shots to reach max spread increased from 20 to 30. Developer comments, this change lets Wrecking Ball finish off enemies a bit more reliably when he's outside of point-blank range and makes him less reliant on his pile driver combos. Zarya projected barrier, size decreased 15%, now matching back to the size of particle bar barrier. And of course, particle barrier is the personal barrier. Health decreased from 225 to 200, matching back to the health of particle barrier. So it is a complete revert. Developers comments. Zarya is using the barrier on her allies more often to peel or initiate combination plays, which makes the ability more team orientated and less self-serving. This change preserves that in interesting choice by keeping the cooldown reduced when used on an ally while targeting her enemy sustain instead, which is increased significantly with the bonuses to the barrier health and size. Cassidy gets a pretty massive buff to combat roll. So damage reduction increased from 50 to 75%. Now, let that sink in. If you roll with Cassidy and take 100 damage, you will only actually take 25 damage. That is, uh, that's very strong. That's very strong. Think about getting like pulse bombed and rolling. Hmm. Anyway, developer comments. Most damage mitigation from combat roll feels incidental as the ability is used more for mobility or reloading. This adjustment allows Cassidy to be more intentional with his rolls to avoid large amounts of damage with correct timing. May gets a complete, well, reversal of recent buffs. It's kind of sad. She goes back to the state of May uh, when Overwatch 2 launched, basically. So this is what's happened. Deep chill has been removed. That, of course, was the effect which built up after you were attacking a target with primary fire, and then they would sort of flash or your screen would flash. Then you shoot them with secondary fire and it would do bonus damage. That's now gone. Endothermic Blaster, damage per second has been increased from 70 back to 100. Uh, now immediately slows enemies by 40% instead of building up over time. Developer comments, we liked the 1-2 combo that Deep Chill provided as it added an interesting layer for hero mastery. However, in practice, it increased the amount of crowd control suffered by enemy players while also reducing May's effectiveness. Rather than further increasing the slow or increasing cumulative combo damage, both of which would lead to a more frustrating experience for the opposing player, we are reverting May back to her balance prior to adding the deep chill passive. Torbjorn gets two nerfs. Rivet Gun primary fire recovery increased from 0.48 to 0.51 seconds. Overload health bonus decreased from 100 to 75. Developers comments. Torbjorn's rivet gun can feel overwhelming with how quickly it shoots. This change reduces the firing cadence and makes it more manageable on the receiving end. Overload provides too much defensive value, so we're lowering the overall health bonus. Brig gets a buff to whip shot. Damage increased from 70 to 80. Developers comments. This change increases her proficiency at protecting her allies by rewarding accuracy with her most aim-focused ability. Ilyari gets a solar rifle healing nerf, and it's a pretty big one. Secondary fire healing per second decreased from 120 to 105. Developer comments, Ilyari's burst healing output is still a little too high, so we're lowering the effectiveness of the solar rifle secondary fire to bring it more in line with other support heroes. So let's recap the other major changes in this patch. So most notably, we have a new map. This is Samoa. You guys can see footage of this being played in the background of this video. So Samoa is a new control map where you'll fight on a tropical beach, a gleaming city, and inside a volcano. Watch out for deadly pitfalls, or you might just be swimming in lava. Samoa will be available to play right away in a dedicated arcade card and will appear in quick play and other ranked modes starting on October the 10th, with it appearing in competitive play later in the season yeah i like this map it's got that like pixar vibe to it it's, it's really it's a nice nicely designed map the volcano point is really really cool i really like that point um but yeah it's just a cool map it's a nice looking map you know overwatch maps we like it when they get added to the game i think most people are probably a bit indifferent it's like oh it's a new map that's fine you know everyone wants heroes and stuff like that don't they but i think this is cool halloween terror is back and it's got a new game mode and the new game mode is it's actually 
it's really sad when you play this new game mode. I'm going to put an entire video together on this, so I don't want to focus too much on it in this video. Um, but basically, it takes elements from the old uh, PVE. So you've got things like item pickups, like you actually pick up new weapons when you play in this mode. Um, there are loot boxes that you open and they spawn power-ups for your hero. This, again, was something removed from Overwatch PVE. Um, it, it's very basic because it takes place literally on the final point of um, Blizzard World. You're just in the cathedral and you just sort of run back and forth over the same area, killing monsters, um, which are from Junkenstein's Revenge, until a boss spawns. And the boss is one of the thematic heroes. So you'll get like the butcher spawn, um, which would be Roadhog in his butcher skin uh, and that kind of thing. It's cool, right? It's fine, you know, but uh, yeah, it is kind of a bit sad when you realize all these things could have been in a fully fledged PVE system that was never really developed. So this is really funky, right? There is a new group respawn system. And I'm going to do my best to explain this here based off the comments that Blizzard have actually made on the system. But I guess the TLDR of this is it makes it easier to regroup if you get wiped. So if your team get killed, within a certain time frame, so pretty fast, right? So if you die, someone dies a few seconds later and dies again and again, what it will do is resync your spawn. So let's say, for example, you had a 10 second respawn as standard. Well, if somebody has died and then someone dies again, a few seconds after, your 10 second respawn might get dropped down to, and these are figures I'm just using as a, an example here, guys, but it might get dropped down to like seven seconds. So you actually respawn quicker. Now, the benefit of this system means that it will sort of, it hopefully will reduce the number of stomps in the game because as you're getting wiped off a point as a team those players that are dying are actually respawning together and then can test again as a unit instead of trickling back in and trickling in has always been an issue throughout the seven years of overwatch's life and it's been an issue that i tried to i tried to cure <laughs> back in the first couple of years by making god knows how many videos going don't trickle in and nobody listens and but anyway this is what blizzard say Heroes who die within five seconds of each other will respawn together, resulting in some players having either a slightly longer or shorter queue than the standard 10 seconds. Heroes who die more than five seconds from another player eliminated will still respawn in 10 seconds on their own. These changes do not apply to competitive play mode, but I think they will, guys, as soon as they work out the bugs with this. So this is what the devs say. We think that team fights are some of the most enjoyable moments in our game. But we've all been in matches where team cohesion or lack thereof makes these moments a rarity. These matches often turn into stomps for the team that can't group up and preventing stomps is a high priority for us. As such, this season, we're modifying how heroes respawn for quick play. Heroes that die within five seconds of each other will be respawned in a wave together. This means that respawn times will sometimes change in order for heroes to respawn together. If a hero dies further apart than five seconds from another death in their team, they still respawn in 10 seconds as they would have in the past. We'll be listening close to feedback on this new system and depending on the response and making any changes, we will consider adding these adjustments to competitive play in a later season. Now, I think this is kind of like probably the best update in this patch. It's one of those stealth things that people will just look at and go, okay, they'll gloss over that. But honestly, I think this could really change the way Overwatch is played and it could increase the number of group fights. That's going to increase the quality of the game. This could be huge. This could be... I'm not even overselling this here. This could be like a pivotal moment in Overwatch 2's history in like making the game arguably better than Overwatch 1. Mm, stay tuned. We also get an update to the uh, unranked lever penalties. Now, this again, I think is really good. So check this out. 75% XP penalty has been removed. But, but wait, wait, let, let me just go through the rest of the list before you go crazy. The penalty thresholds have not changed but the mechanics have also never been completely explained. The last 20 games played a player participated in are recorded. Leaving four of these 20 games activates the first penalty threshold. Leaving six of these 20 games activates the second penalty threshold. Queuing for most game modes is now suspended when a player leaves a match inside a penalty threshold. Players that reach the first penalty threshold will be suspended for 10 minutes. Players that reach the second penalty threshold will be suspended for 30 minutes. The queue suspension will reapply each time a player leaves a game when they are above the first penalty threshold, but not when they complete their games. Consecutive match XP bonus has been renamed to Endurance Bonus. Endurance Bonus is XP granted when finishing matches without leaving the previous match. Now, the developers' comments are this. Previously, if players left too many games, 
we would apply a 75% penalty to their Battle Pass XP that is gained. We found this had very little impact on those who leave deliberately and severely impacted those who don't have much time to play but want to earn the rewards in our Season Battle Pass. We're changing it to make it more difficult for players who leave games to be disruptive while not applying too much impact to those who don't intend to be ruining the experience for others. So, what this system is doing is let's just throw a scenario out there. Let's say you, well, th this is a scenario that's affected me. You know, let's use this as an example. So I'm playing Overwatch and I'm, I'm only playing in quick play and I'm just trying to get the um, the Anna skin at the end of the season. So I'm, well, for the, at the end of the battle pass, I should say. So I'm playing through it. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Fine, fine, fine. Then Olive, my dog needs to go to the toilet. So I'm like, oh, Olive, can you just wait a minute? She can't. So now I've got to take her to the toilet, but I'm in the middle of a game. So I have to leave that game. Now, if I keep leaving the game, I'm just going to get 75% XP penalty. Then it's going to be much more difficult for me to start, you know, earning the battle pass tiers. And that's going to put me off from doing it. And so what Blizzard are doing is going, no, we're not going to give you that, but we're just going to prevent you from accessing games. So you will be blocked out of the queue. And that's your punishment for leaving the game. Fair enough. But your XP isn't affected. Now, the reason why this is kind of huge is, it, it, again, it's one of these things blizzard are trying to change to make people finish the battle pass to keep them engaged with the battle pass a little change that could probably help the battle pass quite a bit you guys know i'm not the biggest fan of the battle pass but i think overall this is probably a better change because it's not going to punish those moments where you know you genuinely do have to leave of course if you're still a serial offender it will still punish you uh, accordingly because you're still going to be banned out of games you won't be able to queue for games as well. So I think this is fine. There's also a load of hero option and input updates. Don't worry, I won't go over them in this video. Just go and check out the patch notes if you want to check them out. But it's things like just changing the way, like for example, like Doomfist, added a hero specific option, swap Meteor Strike, confirm and zoom out inputs off by default. You know, there's that for basically every hero has been looked at. Um, you've got some, obviously there's bug changes as well. You've got um, things like, um, but there's some changes to challenges, a, a bit of a change to player uh, progression, or, although not that much. Um, you've got uh, hero mastery um, changes and stuff like that. I think oh, you can also now spectate people who are playing story missions if they're on your friends list. It's kind of funny because nobody's actually playing any of the story missions. If you go and queue for them now, I challenge you to do it. There's just nobody playing. You'll just get bots on your team, which is kind of sad. <laughs> This is the final thing I actually want to show you guys. Look at this. They finally added a loadout system to the hero gallery. So this is D.Va and you've got three loadouts, A, B and C. You can't rename them at the moment, but I think that's fine. You know, why would you desperately need to rename these? But you can go like, OK, this is my A loadout. It's got all of my specific cosmetics, which is cool. And then I could go to B straight away. Oh, look, it's my Overwatch 1 loadout if I'm feeling nostalgic for the glory years. And then I can go, oh, look, it's C because now I'm feeling like I want to go um, and arrest some criminals. <laughs> this is great because this means, again, you can customize your cosmetics, something that should have been in Overwatch from the start. So good job, Blizzard. I do like it when things like this get added to the game. But there you go, guys. That's Season 7 of Overwatch 2. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. And uh, let me know what you think about the Sombra changes because I think we're going to see her in every game. And she's definitely going to get nerfed pretty quick, I think, because the damage is crazy, like absolutely crazy. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll catch you, lovely lot, on the next one. See you soon. Glory is forever. <laughs>